May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us pray. God of glory, You showed us Your glory in Christ and declared Yourself to be full of grace and truth. We approach You in humble faith this morning. There is no part of this universe in which You are not present, yet You are above and beyond it all. So unimaginably great that we cannot conceive with our tiny intellects the vastness, the immensity, and the glory of who You are. Yet, You are Emmanuel, God with us. You have said that You delight to dwell in the midst of Your people, and that when two or three are gathered together in Your name, You are in the midst. Confident of this and thankful for this assurance, we approach You today and ask that You might receive our worship, fill us afresh with the Spirit, and enable us to sense Your presence among us today. For we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The hymn, As the Deer Pants for the Water. We're going to hear read from Luke chapter 15, the Word of God, but it's going to be read in Gaelic by Hector Mackenzie, 
one of the army chaplains who is with us here today. Hector's from the island of Skye and spent his time of discernment with me when he was there in Skye. Hector, would you come forward and read to us in Gaelic, Luke 15, 1 to 7. And Shin Hanik Nikinj Vud Ulu Agus Nepergich im Fakaska Rumesh Dirkrish Agus Rein the Fadisich Agus Nescrivich in Geren A gra Ham Fersha or Gal Ferker Gaemsi Agus a Gieche Malirue Agus La Edeschen and Kosselach Shadue Gra Kunnen je geusje, ik wil kiet kuren. Maar ga je ze aan je, nog welke een nieuw duik als een keer vijf dat ze naast. Als nog tijd je aan jou in de kuren, ga je, dat ze van je. Als er geen voeten, kun je er gewoon niet lekker te gaan. Als er geen kijkje. Grimie a chartian, agus a chersnich in kaun a chele, a gradiwe, denu gartiachus malirumse, a hyun genuer me machure a vakailtje. Mashun, ha me gradiv, gemi oivnes er neiv, er schon un fergich in de erichus, nes moan na er schon nu dirk agus keher fichet fiden, ek nach el feim. It edichus. Amen. Thank you, Hector. One of my uncles, Hector indeed was his name, was a shepherd, and he worked in and around the hills near Loch Gilpit. He was a chain smoker, and he loved a dram. And I remember going out with him into the hills with Misty, his faithful shit dog. It was the early summer of 1964, and you can imagine going out into the hills was a great adventure for a young child except we had to get up well before six o'clock in the morning. But what I found remarkable about him was the relationship that he had with his sheep. The minute they heard his voice, they came running to him. He would speak to them, he would stroke them, and he knew each one of them really well. And he knew the lambs, and he knew where they came from as well. There were over 150 ewes and their lambs there. But there was a clear intimacy between him and his sheep. And every time I hear the passage that we've just heard read, he comes to mind. As well as when we hear John chapter 10 read about the good shepherd, he comes to mind. What would happen if a lamb or a ewe was ill? They had his full attention and commitment. His skill came to bear in reaching out to them and in making sure that they were well taken care of. He was their overseer, he was their protector, and he was their guide. And yes, 
He was also their rescuer too, if that was needed. And so there was this passion that existed between him and the sheep. And if one of them was missing, and he would know that, him and Misty would go off in order to find them. Fast forward another decade, and there's a discussion taking place in an office in Cathcart at the beginning of a financial year in Weir's about what would be the acceptable level of bad debt that we could write off. And 5% was what was suggested. Until eventually, I chipped in and said that no bad debt was an acceptable debt, and that our department would make sure and be committed to making sure that everything was brought home. Now, of course, Jesus is not talking about the world of commerce here. He's not talking about industry as we experience it, because if there was a 1% loss, that's an acceptable loss. Let's not chase it. Let's make sure that we keep the 99%, and that's okay. Forget about the 1% that's lost. But here is a clear passion of God described for people who are lost, and it describes the wonderful hope of the Christian gospel and the wonderful responsibility of you and I to be like Christ. They live beside us, the lost. There are many of them. Some of them are in our supplementary rules. They're in our youth groups, Sunday schools, or however we describe them, those that were once there but are no longer there. Have we the same passion for the good of people that our Lord Jesus Christ had. Is that what clearly marks us off and describes the kind of people that we are? Do we sometimes have restless nights wondering about those who were once in our charge and are no longer there and have gone away far, far, from the love of God. More importantly, in this high-powered, increasingly secular and materialistic culture, often driven by selfishness and greed, rather than being driven by love itself, is there within us a passion for the souls of men and women and boys and girls? Is there a passion for the very soul of Scotland? This nation that we say that we love so dearly. But finally, think on this. Is it not the case that our concern today is not for the one in a hundred that is lost, but rather increasingly for the ninety-nine in a hundred that are lost. Our inspiration to get back into the mind of that simple shepherd on the hills of Argyle who loved his sheep, who cared for them deeply, and would make any personal sacrifice for their good. Our 
responsibility is not ultimately to ensure that a denomination survives. Our personal responsibility is to be out there, out with our denomination, being a shepherd to the lost sheep of Scotland, of whom there are too many. Let's pray. Great shepherd of the flock, who cares deeply for every one of your sheep, we are amazed at the depth of your love, a love without beginning or conclusion. Help us as your church to care with the compassion with which you care, to have a zealous, ever-burning, outreaching, searching love. We thank you this day for enabling us as your people to make a difference, to make a difference to the lives of so many people. Indeed, we thank you for the care that each one of us here receives from the church, your body. Living God, in all of those difficult places where we seek to make a difference, help us not to blow our own trumpet, but to humbly get on with the business of serving you in faith. For the work of cross-reach, and the wide range of services offered that seek to support and transform lives, we give you thanks. And we ask that you would encourage all those who serve with the knowledge that the whole church is 100% behind them. Bless them with strength and with vision. For our chaplains in the services on land and sea and in air, thank you for their vision for their service, for the men and women that they serve, often in difficult circumstances and situations. Lord, it's in our hearts to live and to seek for peace and reconciliation. Sadly, in a world that seems to be so ill at ease with itself, we pray for the continued insightful and committed work of the Iona community here in Scotland and internationally. Lord, over the years, we have been privileged to witness the imaginative and innovative work of our guild, making a substantial difference to the lives of many in this country and further afield. In challenging times for the guild, continue to enable them to own a vision that both honors your name and heals lives. Lord, there is nothing more important than for us to know that our children and the most vulnerable are safe. Thank you for those in congregations and presbyteries who work to ensure a robust and safe space in our buildings and places of service. Gracious Father, many of us came to faith by walking through the doors of buildings dedicated to the proclamation of the gospel, where our hearts were nurtured and our minds inspired. We recognize the difficult task of our general trustees for the care and the assessment of our buildings, precious spaces to us. Bless them with wisdom as they forge ahead with their future plans. And so, loving, gracious, good Lord, we commit our day to You here in faith as we constitute ourselves a general assembly with the expectation that all we do might be sincerely done to the glory of Your name. Amen. The beautiful hymn, O love that wilt not let me go.